everybody! Welcome to Mondays with Mark. I'm Mark, and this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Oh, yes, it is. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for stopping by today. We have a great show for you. Y'all, y'all, I just wet my plants. <laughs> plank that play on words. And tonight's show is all about plants. Oh yes it is. Oh my gosh. So we're going to get caught up with some chit chat. I have a few tips for you if you're thinking about starting your own garden. We have an awesome project. We're going to make an indoor hanging herb garden and I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at some of the new plants I chose for my garden this year. It's pretty pretty cool and a little bit spooky too. <laughs> so really y'all y'all know that I'm a, a big uh, a lover of plants and gardening. I, I really do love it. You know it, it helps my mental health and improves my mood. In fact there's been like numerous studies about that subject alone and it does. It's a win-win right? It does help our mental health and you know kind of helps the earth too right? There's something about you know planting and caring for and nurturing another living thing that just really helps uh, us as well, you know? So if you're even thinking a little bit about starting a garden, I highly, highly recommend it. And not since the days of the Victory Garden have we seen such a um, an interest in gardening over the last couple years. And that, of course, is due to the pandemic. You know, people are looking for things to do. And gardening, gardening is fabulous. And I'm going to use the term gardening as kind of like an umbrella term tonight, you know? It could be like a, you know, an outside in your yard, like proper garden, like like mine is. Uh, it could be a patio garden, a container garden, or even some house plants right in your house. So, um, you know, I, I I'm I'm like garden dreaming right now. I know we're only in February, but. This is a very important time when it comes to gardening because this is the planning stage, right? So, um, I don't know. I put together just a few little tips and suggestions uh, maybe to help you make your decision if you're going to have a garden or not. And uh, if you do decide to have a garden, these tips might help you out along the way. Check it out. So, are you thinking about starting a garden? Oh, I hope you are, because I put together some tips and tricks to help you out on your gardening journey. Whether you're a novice or a beginner or you're an experienced gardener, hopefully these tips will definitely help you out. Now, I'm not a professional, but I do love all things plants, and I've been gardening for, well, a few years now. So let's get started. First and foremost, location. You need to pick a place to put your garden, right? This could be a space of land right outside in your yard, or this could be a space on your patio, or even some containers if you're going to do a container garden, you know, like a windowsill in your house. And keep in mind the most important thing sunlight. And a rule of thumb on that, six to eight hours of sunlight every day. Okay? Okay. Now, number two, a plan. Oh, yes. Now, I highly recommend drawing yourself a little plan just like this. Now, this is my whole yard because, like, well, my garden is my whole yard, really. <laughs> and then once you draw that out, you can take a look and say, oh, I want to put flowers here. I want to put vegetables here. Well, you get the picture. And are you doing a container garden or maybe just want some house plants? You can do the same thing. Just do a little sketch of all of your containers and then you can brainstorm on what to put in each one. Oh yes, pick your plants. Y'all, this is the funnest part of the whole process. All my seed catalogs came in and I flipped through and chose all my plants. You could do that with seed catalogs right online or even at your local nursery. Now this next part I call the timeline. Oh yes, this is when we pay attention to things like 
when do we plant? Are we going to start our seeds indoors? And when do we do that? How long does it take for a plant to grow and harvest? Also, do I need any supplies? How about some garden tools? Or if we're going to start our seeds inside, do we have our little seed trays that we need? Yes, this is the, goes also in with the planning stage of our garden. And a matter of fact, you can keep all of that information right on the back of our garden plan that we talked about earlier. This is a great way to familiarize ourselves with our garden and how our plants grow and what things they need to flourish and thrive. So now that we have all that down, here are some tips moving forward. First, don't buy every plant you see. Oh, I know it is so tempting, right? You see this plant, you see that plant, you want them, you need them. You don't need all of those plants. This could be at your local nursery or even with these seed catalogs. Just remember how much space you have so you don't have all those plants left over with nowhere to put them. And another thing, remember, plants grow. So keep in mind how much space a plant will take up as it grows, both in its width or its spread and its height as well, okay? And another thing, get to know your pests and your weeds if you're doing an outdoor garden. Now, not all insects are bad for your garden. As a matter of fact, many of them are very, very beneficial. As far so, as weeds go, keep in mind um, that you will have weeds. And once you get to know them and familiarize yourself with them, you have a better chance at controlling them. For example, crabgrass, right? Crabgrass is self-sowing. Now, just knowing that, I know that I can pull that crabgrass out of the ground before it goes to seed and it won't come back next year. There are plenty of online extension sites that will help with all of that. And as we move forward, it's time to start thinking about ways to upkeep our garden. And that would be things like rain barrels and compost bins. Both are super beneficial for our garden and the earth. And we have videos on both of those subjects right here on the channel, okay? So hopefully these tips will help you out on your gardening journey. <laughs> that was, those tips were okay, weren't they? I don't know. I, I think it was okay. I don't know. I'm not a professional or anything. But anyway, I hope those tips helped you out uh, if you're thinking about starting a garden either outside or right in your house, you know. So, oh, and you know what? Oh, man, I cannot wait. I, I, I've been wanting to share this with you for a while. I'm putting a new addition into my garden. Oh, man, and it's so spooky, too. I decided to do a Halloween-themed uh, plot in the garden here. Check it out. These are the plants I got this year. All new. I never grew them before. First of all, I got the bat flower. Look how awesome that looks. Oh, yes. And then the skeleton plant. Y'all, oh my gosh, they have white flowers. And when it rains, the flowers turn clear. Oh, I can't wait to see that. And then I have the candy corn plant. Another really awesome autumn looking plant. Oh, yes. And then the voodoo lily. If I can get that to grow, I will be in total heaven, let me tell you. And then, of course, in addition to that, I'll have my, my orange zinnias and marigolds and my black peonies. Oh, yes, and our um, dragon's breath coleus. Ooh, look how cool that is. Yes. And remember, we started these um, in autumn. We took clippings and we rooted them ourselves and um, put them in pots a little bit later. Look how nice. They really turned out nice. And um, along with our mums, remember we did the mums. They turned out nice. They're over here, actually. Look, these turned out. Which one? Here, I'll show you this one. Look, look how healthy. They're all starting to bud now. These will be these will bloom just in time for Mother's Day. Give something, can give something. And I have like um, 
six each of those of either one and uh our rosemary we wrote we rooted our rosemary too we have that ready to go and I, I have six of all of these which is great because i don't have to grow them again this year i don't have to buy them they're ready to go i can put them right out in and this brings us to our project of the day oh man we're gonna make an indoor hanging herb garden and i got all the supplies right at the dollar tree again just another way to bring like the garden and plants into our home and let me tell you i don't know why i didn't do an indoor herb garden sooner it just kills me to have to buy fresh herbs at the grocery store when i grow them in my garden so we're going to take care of that problem right now All right, so you ready to do a project? Ooh, I'm stoked. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. Well, as I told you before. Anyway, today we're going to make an indoor hanging herb garden. Ah, yes, yes. All right, so I'm not going to take up any more time. Let's get started, okay? So we're going to start with the materials that we need. So first of all, we're going to need two planters like this preferably plastic y'all i scored these at the dollar tree oh yes 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 so we got two of these going all right we also need some soil for inside it could be just regular potting soil okay not garden soil or top soil we need soil that's specifically designed for like you know pots it's a little bit lighter too which is very good Check this out. They have these over at the Dollar Tree. All you do is add water to this and it poofs up and you have soil. So we're gonna try this out today, okay? So, planters, soil, we'll need some jute twine, just like this. And then we're going to need some seeds or plants. I got this collection here, right at Walmart there. And it has all we need here. Um, uh, parsley, thyme, basil, and oregano in here or you can get plants i scored these right at our uh, local grocery store i have a live uh basil plant and some live thyme here couldn't find parsley was a little upset about that but i'm sure i'll find some somewhere else most of your uh mega grocery stores will carry live herbs like this in a pot with soil that's the kind you want okay and uh, i also have our rosemary which we rooted from the garden last year so a nice collection of herbs okay in addition to that you're going to need an awl you know with a little pointy end there or you know a thin phillips head screwdriver and a ruler this will come you know important it is it is important let me tell you and then in addition to that maybe some scotch tape scissors and a black sharpie marker okay so let's get going Okay, so the first step in this is we are going to, now, just bag up a little here, okay? These are going to be hanging, and I'm doing two of these, okay? And it'll all make sense in a little bit, okay? So we need to punch holes in our planter that we can um, thread our jute twine through. So on the top here, I'm going to put two holes on either side okay and you don't you know you don't have to measure this part just you know if you can eyeball it it's fine and I would recommend putting the hole close to the edge here okay to the inside edge because that'll give you the most strength you know these are from the dollar store they're not you know that sturdy but by doing this you know it'll be a little bit stronger okay and to do that we're gonna take our all and we're just gonna I guess I should take the lid off of it huh okay here, we'll use this one. I'll show you in case you don't have an awl. We'll use a Phillips head screwdriver, okay? And we're just going to poke a hole right in there by turning, 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 just like so, okay? All right, now we're going to complete this on both of our planters so we have a total of four holes on each planter, okay? All right. Okay, all right. So... We have that done just like so. Two and two on both of our planters, okay? All right, so the next step, we're gonna take our jute twine, grab it here like this, and this is about the right thickness. You could use any thickness, just don't go thinner than this because, you know, we want it to be sturdy. And we're gonna cut 
four equal lengths, okay? And make them pretty long. You really want them longer than shorter. We can always trim them shorter, but we can't make them longer, if you know what I'm saying. So I have four strands here, all cut, ready to go. Now here's a little tip for you, okay? We're gonna be threading these through the holes we just made. So grab some scotch tape and put a little piece around the edge like this. See? That will make it so much easier to thread down through. Let me tell you. Oh my gosh. Trial and error, right? Okay. So now we have both of our... So, okay, starting... We're going to do both of our planters right now. Starting with the top one, we are going to thread all four of the strands that we have just cut. Let me get one here. Okay, and we're going to thread them down through from the top to the bottom, okay? And we're going to do that through, here, there we go, like that, okay? And then pull it through the, like that, all right? Just like that, and you want to leave a good amount of length at the top, okay? You know, maybe a foot or two, you know? This is where we're going to be hanging it from the ceiling or wherever you're going to hang it from. So you want enough length on the top, okay? That's why we made it so long, all right? Then we're going to thread this all the way through the other planter too, okay? So by the time we're done, they'll, they'll be like this, okay? Like this all thread it through, all right? It'll make a lot more sense once I show you, all right? So here, let me get started. Okay, so first planter is done. We have them uh, fed through the first planter. Okay, so now before we move on to the second planter, all right, these up here, uh, we're gonna wanna tie knots in each one of our strings right here. I'll just do one and show you here. Doesn't matter, we don't have to measure or anything, just tie a knot, bam. All right, and that will keep it from sliding through, you know what I mean? So you want to do that all the way around with all four of your um, pieces of string, okay? Okay, all right, so now we have our two planters um, threaded together. Okay, let's see how we are here. Okay, so right. now what we have to do is we have to put knots in the bottom planter on the twine, right? Now for this part, we do have to measure, okay? So, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab our our cords. You can do this two at a time or one at a time, it doesn't matter. Pull it all the way tight. Now this, this string, this is on our top planter. Pull it all the way top, tight to the top. And then we're gonna grab our ruler and we're gonna tuck that ruler right up against the lip, just like that, okay? And then we're going to follow our jute twine all the way down to 12 inches, okay? 12 inches, all right? And I got my thumb on it, my thumb on it right there. And then we're going to take our black Sharpie marker and we're going to mark right there at that 12 inch mark, okay? And we're going to do that with all four of the... Um, strings hanging down from the top okay now this little black mark here that i put on there this is where we're going to tie our knots for the bottom planter all right so go ahead and repeat that with all four of your um all four of your strings there okay okay so we're all marked up here just put that in there now we're gonna pull the bottom cord through our bottom planter till we see, there we are. And there's our black mark, and we're just gonna go ahead and make a knot right on it like that, and then following the black, here, pull it, pull it, use your thumbs, you know, you just wanna be right on your little uh, mark. There, just like that. And now when we pull it through, see, it'll hold the bottom, and since they're all measured, it'll be nice and even, all right? All right, let's tie our knots here. Okay, I have one already finished, ready to go here. There we go. So, starting at the top. Okay, there's our top ones. Pull it up. And there's our bottom one with the knots. Pull it real tight here, make it all nice and even. All right, and there we have it. Okay, nice, huh? All right. I didn't tell you before. We're gonna take the take the labels off. Okay, we don't want to be like ghetto or anything here. So I took the took the labels off. All right. 
So there we go. Now these little ones that are hanging down here actually serve no purpose at all. You could, um, you know, fray them up, like, you know, separate them and make them like little tassels if you want, or you can trim them right up to your knot. Now, if you do decide to trim it right up to your knot there, I would suggest adding some hot glue to your knot or maybe some permanent glue just to give it a little more support there. You know, um, if it doesn't have that little tail down here, you know, you don't want it to pull through. You know what I'm saying? All right. All right. So there we go. So now stack these back together here our top strings. Now, these are the ones that we're going to hang our planter with. I'm going to be hanging mine straight from the ceiling in my kitchen. Um, so you have a choice here. Now, you could either take each one of these, each one of these, and tie a knot in it, like so, okay, which creates a little hook there for it, like that, Okay. And you would put two hooks in the ceiling, okay, to hang it with on both sides. Or you could take all four pieces of string and tie them together like that. The choice is totally up to you. Now, I would recommend doing the two hook method, especially if your planters are particularly heavy. And that all depends on your soil. I chose a soil that is pretty high in peat moss, so it's a lot lighter than your traditional potting soil would be, okay? So make a judgment call on that, but I do recommend using two hooks to hang it, especially if you're hanging it from the ceiling, okay? All right, so now the fun part. We get the plant. <laughs> the fun part, the fun part. Okay, so I apologize. I didn't realize my Vornado was running. Did it sound like a wind tunnel in here? My apologies. <laughs> I do have my ambiance on in the background. And let's see, what am I watching today? Oh, we're in a nice cozy cabin with a little doggy sleeping in front of a fire. And there's a snowstorm outside. I love it. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, so first things first, we need to start with our soil, okay? And we're going to be trying this out today. It's uh, uh, compacted soil, you know. Um, I've seen these before, those little peat pots and stuff, but I've never seen a big one like this. And they have these at the, um, at the Dollar Tree. So um, let's try it out. All right, so I have put it in there, and then you add one liter of water to it. Okay, there we go. And then you let it sit for about three to five minutes. And look! Look at Jeff! How awesome is this? Look! Oh, I love it! Totally love it. Nice, huh? All right, so it looks like if you're going to get all of your materials uh, like I did at the Dollar Tree, it looks as if um, one of these one of these is good for each planter with the addition of some soil. So that's what I'm going to do. I have my I have my indoor soil here, and uh, I'm going to add some more soil to it as needed. Okay, so now let's talk about plants. So. My project today is because I really wanted to have an herb garden in my kitchen. Um, but you could just as easily put flowers in this as well, or even succulents, or maybe even some house plants in there too, okay? Flowers would be nice. Get some that drape over the side. I think that'd be really pretty too, you know. Remember, tonight's video is all about bringing like a garden into your home or planning and starting your own garden outside, you know? So whatever plants you choose, you know, totally, totally up to you, okay? But we're going to do an herb garden today. So like let's get started, shall we? The rosemary seed, seed. Yay! And there we have it. Okay, so where are we at here? Okay, so our top one, here we go. Twist it around here for you. Top one here, I have basil and rosemary, and I put some parsley seeds right there. And in the bottom one, we again have some parsley here with seeds. And we have some thyme in the middle and some more um, basil on this side, too. In the back here, I put some oregano seeds. So, 
Oh, I'm so excited. And y'all, y'all, that's all there is to it. At this point, we're just going to give it a nice drink of water, trim them up a little bit, clean them up a little bit, and then we go and hang them up. All right, so let's go hang this up, and I'll show you the finished product, okay? What did you think? Did you like it? Oh, I hope you liked it. I hope you liked it. You know what? At the very least, I hope it may got you thinking or inspired you in some way to bring, you know, Mother Nature uh, closer to you. You know, whether you decide to do like a, a victory garden or, or a flower garden or even just get some houseplants to, to bring in your home. I do hope it inspired you to, uh, to do that, okay? I had so much fun tonight and I, I really hope that you did too. I do. I, you know, we had some tips and we did a nice little project and I, I just can't, I can't say it enough. I really, really hope you get your hands dirty this year a little bit. Okay. Okay. And I'll be with you every step of the way. Okay. All right. Thank you so, so much for watching. It means the world to me. It does. Definitely, definitely subscribe to our channel, okay? And definitely, definitely give that notification bell a little push so you know when we have a new video out, okay? Check us out over on Facebook and Instagram. And all of our contact information is listed right down below. That would be our uh, post office box and our email address. If you have any questions on anything we talked about tonight, just shoot me an email, okay? Thank you again for watching. Remember, everybody, please stay safe and stay well. But above all else, stay positive, okay? And I will see you next time. Ciao, everybody! <laughs>